On our local segment today, a Quincy shout-out goes out to our boy, Devin Alexander. He's made his way in the marijuana community through it all, trying to make a difference. And what do you got going on on Thursday? Yeah, so on Thursday, we're taking part in what's called National Expungement Week. So National Expungement Week was started last year, and it was put on by these local nonprofits who want to give people the tools and the resources to help them remove nonviolent cannabis crimes from their criminal record. See, so obviously, as you know, in multiple states, cannabis is now legal now, and there's still people who are incarcerated for minor cannabis crimes, while the others are millionaires off the same thing. So on Thursday, we set up a big event, Sons of Italy, 120 Quarry Street, from 6 to 10 p.m. We're going to have a whole bunch of lawyers, pro bono attorneys, giving people free legal advice. Oh, no yeah, there's going to be awesome. free food served by the fours. Um, yeah. oh, we're going to get righty. people, we're gonna get <laughs> people, we're gonna get people <laughs> registered to vote. We're going to give information pertaining to food stamp assistance as well, and there'll be a cash bar on deck. So, yeah, we're really just trying to help out the community, yeah. man. I've lived in Quincy my entire life. I've gone here from kindergarten to college, and being able to work with cannabis and give back to my own community means the world to me. That's great. And what's yeah, kind of your own personal yeah, message? Like, what, like why are you doing this personally to help out such a great cause? Yeah, so back, I remember back senior year, 2011, back before cannabis was really decriminalized in Massachusetts, I got arrested for possessing two grams, count them two grams. Yikes. And, you know, I, at, <laughs> at that point in time, I'm no, good. not at all. No. There's 28 no, grams no, no, in an no. ounce for those who don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm going like, to like hit you with a cur curveball here. Small world. I, I was at Teddy Bousquet's house. Yes. And I was looking, we were, I think we were looking out the window and we saw the whole thing. And I was like, is that Devin right there? We're like, what the fuck? I was like, now you're thinking about in yeah. 2019. It's yeah, like, man. It's crazy. For weed. That's yeah, like, it was, oh, it was, I was still in school. It was uh, <laughs> winter time over winter break. And they put my name right in the Patriot Ledger. And I had to go back to school and teachers were coming up to me yeah. saying, hey, what did you do over break? I saw your name in there. Yeah, like, huh? Nah, that's a different Devin Alexander. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, that was, uh, yeah. Yeah. So what's your, what's your background? I know you're working in like the marijuana business. Yeah, 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 so I, at that point in time as a senior, there was no dispensaries open in Massachusetts whatsoever. The first dispensary didn't pop up in Massachusetts until 2015. So I always thought I'd have to fucking leave my family and move all the way across the country if I wanted to work with cannabis. But luckily, due to the awesome activists we have in this state, they were able to push it along. And it's really cool because the Massachusetts cannabis industry really started from a lot of strong women of color. There's Shaleen Title, there's Kim Napoli, there's Deshaun De Vincent Lee, and there's Chanel Lindsay as well. Oh, and they've really paved the way for everybody. Yeah, you've done so, your homework, man. Yeah, that's, that's really yeah, impressive. I've really watched yeah. all their moves, their podcasts, their tweets, and all that. So I knew I wanted to do something with cannabis. I've always been the cannabis guy. Growing <laughs> we guys. I've been, yeah, I've been that guy. I've always been the wee guy. I've been yeah, that yeah. guy. So I really put a focus on it after I graduated college and... I really started out doing pharmacy work at CVS as a pharmacy technician, and I'm very thankful for that because it really made a seamless transition to the cannabis industry because we did a lot of similar work, but deal with a lot of different customer bases, and I'd rather deal with a cannabis customer base than a pharmacy customer base any day. Yeah, <laughs> now, oh yeah. yeah now like, it, like, what's your end game in this? Like, what, what are you trying to really put across here. Yeah, so when Massachusetts legalized recreational cannabis, they put language into the law that they had to make an equity program for minorities and people disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs. So they have what's called the Economic Empowerment Program and the Social Equity Program. Now, I've been accepted into what's called the Social Equity Program because I've lived in Quincy my whole life. See, oh, wow. Quincy was labeled an area of disproportionate impact by the CCC, who are the people who govern the Massachusetts cannabis industry. And the way it becomes an area of disproportionate impact is the number of high drug arrests in the area. So there's Quincy, there's Braintree, and there's Randolph. So you have to prove you're from one of those cities. So obviously me living oh, yeah. here my whole life okay. yeah, got yeah, me into yeah, that program. Yeah. So what that program does is it gives people technical assistance, gives them guidance, it gives them free legal advice, it walks them through the process of filling out an application oh, well, nine, yeah, in the Massachusetts yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of, lot of work that goes into it, and I'm really excited to start that. 
you know, this what's called host community agreements. Yeah. And so when you want to open up a recreational business in Massachusetts, you went to these host community agreements and they're basically a contract with the city that you're operating in. Oh, and wow. it's basically telling them how much you're going to pay from your gross sales. So the mandate is you have to start out at 3% and then that's basically it. But these cities are throwing in some extracurricular shit. So yeah, they tell people, stuff, yeah, they'll like tell people give me that 3% and then donate five thousand dollars to this charity give me that three percent and then do all this other stuff as you might have heard going down the fall river the mayor was into a lot (laughs) of that stuff man (laughs) crazy stuff i i read in the news he told this one company he was like you want this recreational you want this community host agreement i'm gonna need two hundred fifty thousand dollars and 12 to 15 pounds of cannabis flour (laughs) what a boss crazy Crazy. The kids, kids, yeah, yeah, the kids, yeah, the kids, twenty-seven, living that Grand Theft Auto life out here. I'm like, who lives in the Fall River? Yeah. Who is yeah. who's building? It's give like children of the corn gone people wild. People request like 250k. Like, just give me it now. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then doing it through, fucking about weed. Here, yeah. doing it through middlemen too. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying they caught him at like the Fall River Country Club playing tennis at seven in the morning. The feds, they'll get you, man. Don't fuck around, the feds. They'll catch you. That's a tough way to go down. Kind of transitioning here. I mean, <laughs> you see Cal- Calvin Johnson, he, like, released uh, earlier in the week. Big weed guy. He used to smoke weed, like, after games instead of opioids. So he oh, yeah. Getting addicted. That's Isn't that big, crazy? Man. Yeah, That's yeah. big. More, more people need to go into research about that. And obviously, everyone sees Gronkowski with a CBD game. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, He's rubbing it on helps. his body. Yeah. It helps. <laughs> like, there's no... Shoving, they shove these painkillers down players' throats and then just have them go back out the next day. Yeah. And you have people, Practice. and you have players <laughs> messed up with all these mental problems and all these addictions, and they're wondering what went wrong. Yeah, because you guys, you're doing all this type, what allowing them to smoke weed, you're penalizing <laughs> them. Josh Gordon, <laughs> bloody looking at that, like what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Calvin Johnson was smoking <laughs> yeah. weed after every game. Yeah. Oh, he, was <laughs> yeah. he was drinking heavy at halftime. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah, really so cool there needs to be more yeah. allowing of the athletes to medicate properly, medicate with. Yeah, medicine that want, comes yeah. naturally instead of made in a lab oh, made yeah, by people you know because a lot that of these crazy a lot of these pharmacists and the pill companies have these agreements you know incentives you write these money scripts we'll even pay you this much you know what i'm saying they get to meet yeah. their quota every month it's yeah. wild everything's just high limit high steam kind of oh, yeah. everyone's trying to get a piece like yeah. that's exactly what it is mm-hmm. so so when is your event so all the, the viewers know and everything yeah september 26 this thursday sons of italy 6 to 10 p.m. We're going to be out there, man. It's just helping people out. If you know anybody, you know, who is affected, just minor possession. And there's other stuff, too. If you ever caught, like, tagging graffiti on some walls, yeah. if you ever do like, many petty larceny, there's other crimes that are expendable, not just cannabis crimes, too. So that's what I'm really trying to educate the community on. Uh, that thing in 2011 that happened to you, did, are you expunged? Like, did you go through this process? That's a good question. So at that point in time, I was 17 years old, so as a juvenile. So once I became 18, those records became sealed. Oh, so, okay. so there's a difference between sealing your record and expunging your record. When you seal your record, you're just limiting who sees it in terms of like yeah, employment. Yeah. So if you want to apply for a job and you, those people ran a third party check on you, they wouldn't see that crime. But if like the FBI wanted to do like yeah, shit, they would see it. Them, yeah. Expungement means they erase it completely. So that means like nobody can yeah, see it, regardless of gone. whatever you do, like the FBI, the CIA, the fucking uh-huh. everyone, like, were, were Texas you, Walker Ranger, yeah. he can't see that <laughs> shit. <laughs> no so at all. Yeah. were you initially trying to go in the military and it prevented you? Was that something that happened? Yeah, the yeah. Air Force. I had um, ambitions of going into the Air Force because I... Uh, when you're 17, you really have three paths, really. You're going to choose a trade job, you're going to join the military, or you're going to go to college. Yeah. And I was fed up with school at that point in time in my life. Yeah, and yeah, the Air Force seemed time. like a yeah. way for me to travel the world. Quincy had to be a burden sometimes. Yeah, you know yeah, man, <laughs> yeah. So I, enjoy, I was in ROTC, but I was really felt like interested in joining the Air Force and wanted to go with that shit. But again, once I was arrested for that, that blocked that pathway for me, and I was no longer to be able to join the Air Force, so that added a lot of stress and worry on to yeah, something that I was already worrying about. about. You're 17 years old, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? Pick yeah. between this shit. Yeah. Well, I think that's really cool about it, is like, you went through all that, and all the people that you're kind of involving people in this meeting or whatever, they went through that too, so like, all you, 
oh, you guys is a struggle, and now you guys can come one one again to like to get together with one another yeah. and get the job. No, it's yeah. gonna be good because a lot of people don't know where to start, and a lot of people. It's good these lawyers are doing it because legal fees right there is just what it's going to cost you. So big shout out to all the lawyers that are coming out and doing this work pro bono. I can't stress that enough because there's just some people that are in it for the money and these people really care about the community oh, yeah. and that is really fucking awesome. To see. Oh yeah, one of the things in the article was like, uh, I forget his name, it's like uh, Blake Mensing. Blake Mensing. Blake Mensing like, uh, is the fucking man. It literally just said cannabis attorney and yes. I was like, wow. Yeah, no. <laughs> what a title. Like, awesome yeah, like, awesome thing about Blake Mensing. So when you... Back to the host community agreements. When you go into these agreements, you have to have like real estate locked down, a spot where you're gonna set up shop. Yeah, like it's and a lot of people will pay rent on those locations before they actually open business. So you see a lot of people going broke before they can even sell a single gram of cannabis. So recently, Blake Mensing negotiated with a town called Maynard. I don't even know what Maynard is. Central Mass. Yeah, yeah, I don't even know yeah, what Maynard yeah, is. Yeah, so yeah, no he had a client, and he negotiated with a host community agreement, and they got it, and they didn't even have a location set up at all. And they got that host community agreement. See, the host community agreement, that's the biggest blockage yeah. to all these equity applicants, because once you have the host community agreement, then that's when you can really start attracting investors and telling them, hey, I got all this shit set up. I just need additional funding. We can get this shit rocking. Yeah, that's, and we'll be there. And I mean, that business is, it's going to be booming. Exactly. If you get the place open, exactly. it's, it's going to be It's all about there. just opening. Yeah. Um, obviously, Massachusetts, we're the only state on the East Coast that has recreational cannabis. Oh. And we're very accessible. You know what I'm saying? You can be here from Rhode Island, New York, Vermont, in under an hour, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm down in Florida two <laughs> weeks ago, and forward. they're running around. Like trying to keep that stuff away from the cops, like it's still, like that ride down there. Like, yeah, it's man, it's really it's, it's it's times have changed too, especially with the freedom rally this past weekend. Seeing how everyone's attitude it is, it's changed towards it. You see the cops out there. You see, yeah, right. <laughs> they've yeah, even yeah. made sections where they made it strictly twenty one plus now in certain ways. So they have the recreational dispensary set up shop. And only advertising the twenty one plus people, which really? is very smart on their part. Yeah. And you have cops just walking by, just having to stand day, down. Like, yeah. What can they do? You can't arrest everyone. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> that yeah. way, they got it's big funny. crimes yeah. out here. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's dope to see though. And it was only one day this year, but I think it's good for one day. You know, three days is a little much. One yeah, day, yeah. One I day remember is that good. stuff like back high in school one day. still going on. That's mm, yeah. That's great. Kind of switching gears again here. You're the first uh, guest on the show. How, how does that kind of feel? That's awesome, man. It's <laughs> really a privilege, you know. Like, I'm very privileged. You guys are fucking too cool. I've yeah. known you for a few. So it was either you or Rachel Starr. So like, interview to copy. Interview to copy. We'll get her next yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. She's still coming. Yeah, no, I want to be here. Well, does she want the consulting for a yeah. hundred yeah. bucks or yeah. something? Yeah. Yeah. Now shut up. Yeah. Me and Devin we're, we're happy to have you on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have a quick question for yeah, you. Go ahead. Once uh, the event's over, is everyone going to smoke like celebratory blunt side in the parking lot? Oh or my god! I, I gotta <laughs> please, please do that? not, no, no, do, do not that. do that. Okay. Oh <laughs> my god! Whatever you do, That's do not, not do what that. We do. Not the yes. plan. Thank not you for plan. bringing that up. Um, yeah, the lady who the controls plan. the events at the Sons of Italy is kind of like Reaper Madness, <laughs> and she does not want us even like stinking like weed at all. It's crazy. We were originally going to plan on holding this event at a Terrell room, which is right up the street yeah, on the yeah. same street. Yeah. They wanted like $7,000 for, for fucking four hours. So we're like, <laughs> Sell us. They, we're, not, we're not doing that. Yeah, yeah, you know what what we're shit. not doing what that. Seven Gs asshole. for one night. Yeah. And the Sons of Italy did it like <laughs> way, 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 way less than that. Let's just say that. Must be Spice Guys. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> and it was funny because the Sons of Italy was like, yeah, um, we'll give you a bar, but if you guys are going to have the dance floor, we're going to have to have police detail out there. Like, <laughs> what? Like, what? Like, it's like, we can have the bar, but if we don't, don't yeah. have, like, no dance floor, we don't have the cops, bro. If we have the dance floor, we're going to have the fucking cops oh. show up because people will be getting crazy. Those made of money, I would like, block it off, you piece of Wild. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Call yeah. the cops. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. crazy. And, like, to start out with our sponsorships, we were going to have uh, vendors from local glass shops pop up and like sell their accessories, but we couldn't do that. Not, the lady was no all pan, against that. So we had to think outside the box. So um, our sponsors are 
the Holistic Center, which is based out of Brighton. They are the people who are responsible for giving a lot of patients their medical marijuana certifications in order for them to obtain their medicine. Another sponsor is Elevate Northeast, which is a nonprofit group which does a lot of events throughout the state focusing on education and helping the community. And we have a lot of other people too, uh, Puffco, they're a vaporizer Puff company. Co. They That's were elite. very generous. <laughs> they, were, they were very generous to send us a Puffco Plus. So we're going to be raffling off a Puffco Plus at the event as well. Okay. Not going to get it that day because it's the Sons of Italy, but yeah. we'll make sure it gets to you. If you come on out, you get a raffle yeah. ticket, and then you can come win a free vaporizer. Now, my final question here is where's the after party? What's nah, going on now? It's a Thursday night. <laughs> Secret location. Look, we'll, 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 we'll we'll have to come out to find out. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. come out and you'll find out where the after party is at. Well, thanks, Devin. I really appreciate you joining the show. So we got Sons of Sons of Italy, yep. six to ten on six Thursday. To 10, Thursday night. Be there. Be square. Uh, yep. Let's do it.